In this video, I'm going to share with you how to prepare a winter campsite in the snow. There are a few pointers you need to be aware of when you're establishing a campsite in the snow that you have no problems with in the summer, but in the winter, these gotchas can really get you. And I'm going to talk about the difference between the two most important tools that you have options for at the end of the video, so you definitely wanna stay for point number seven. So the first thing that you want to be aware of when you're establishing your campsite is deadfall. What does deadfall mean? If you're anywhere near the trees, especially in the winter, always be aware of the trees that are standing up, but the widow maker that is hung in another tree that you might be camping on, a bunch of wind happens and then you are the poor cursed person, boom, guillotine on you. Being aware of deadfall is a big, big consideration in the winter especially because when storms comes through, it comes through, come through? Yes, come through in the winter, you can have a lot greater risk than in the summer just because it's winter, things are a lot more unstable and you can have lots of problems. The second pointer you want to be aware of is give yourself time. In the summer or in the fall or spring or whenever, when there's no snow, it's pretty easy to show up, bang out your tent, set up your tarp or whatever you have, and be ready in like 10 minutes, no problem. Setting up a winter campsite can be an hour long operation or more, depending on the conditions and where you are. The biggest challenge is, is oh, I want to travel as far as possible, get my tent and campsite set up, or my tarp or whatever, and go to sleep, but doing it in the dark increases your risk of not being aware of your surroundings, and also it makes it a lot more energy sucking to be doing this with a pencil beam of a headlamp or a wide headlamp trying to wander around and realizing you set your tent way too close to trees or whatever. I've done it, so you definitely want to be aware of that. The third pointer, by the way, I'm going to take you to an expedition here, so hang on. I'm going to show you the big pointers out in the field. The third thing is make sure to level out your surface before you start working on your campsite and setting up your tent. You want to put a lot of effort into leveling out that surface. I know it sounds a little bit silly to literally be shoveling the rises into the valleys and the snow area that you're in, but believe me, this thing will pay off in spades because as you've rolled onto your tent mate, for the fifth time in an hour at 2 a.m., oh, Okay, I'm gonna start hating you. You're gonna start hating me. We don't want to do that. Instead, put a lot of shovel time into setting up your area because it will turn out much better. Which leads me into point number four, stomp out your tin area as soon as possible. Get shoveling, get it going. As you're walking around, just keep stomping down that snow keep shoveling around and by stomping out that snow, what you do is you begin packing it down so it's more stable so you don't have punch throughs or fall up to your groin in snow and then you're like, eh. I've done it, it totally stinks. Or you're, you're crawling around all of a sudden, woo, your arm ends up completely buried in the snow and your face is literally in the snow. Done it too, I'm just sharing my mistakes that I talk about in Adventure Expedition 1 about all the different things that can totally go wrong in snow camping. It's pretty funny. But after you stomp it out, that brings us to point number five. Let the snow set up as long as possible. Once you've begun the stomping out process, it takes time for that warmth, tiny bit of warmth. I know in snow at minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit or minus like 27 degrees Celsius, it's a big, big deal but let that snow set as long as possible after you've stomped it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to the woods and show you what it's like to actually be out there doing this. One of the challenges of snow camping in Yellowstone is the snow. How do you mean? Well, you can see Terry here stomping this out. We've already crisscrossed the area of skis and I've got my snowshoes on too. And you really need to stomp around and pack this thing in because the snow is deep. How deep up here? Probably seven feet. If I 
If we just skied in, I stepped off my skis. I've been up to my waist and even almost up to my armpits. Yeah, it's a challenge. You can't just roll up your proper quarter mile distance off the road and think you're gonna come in, set up your tent and be done because you'll you'll be punching, you know, your whole arm will just sink into the snow and you'll be struggling. So you really have to put a lot of work into packing out your tent area. And the bigger the tent area, the better because you'll need extra guy line space and all these things. If you make it just exactly the size of your tent, you're gonna struggle. So the more effort you put into this early on, the better it is for snow camping, especially in Yellowstone because of the snow depth. After we got the area stomped out, got our sleds out, rolled out the tent, staked out and everything, it's all ready to go. One thing that I noticed because Terry's a little bit lighter is he can generally walk around the tent without any problem, but I'm heavier. So in the vestibule area, I frog crawl around because where we're putting the stove, I don't want to put this 10 inch depression in the snow with my feet, as you can see there. So for me, I just kind of crawl around. It does chill me a bit, but the annoyance of having this big old pit that you got to then refill with snow is well worth the effort of just scooting around and being mindful that once you set your tent pad area out, you don't want to go punching holes in it because it was a couple nights ago. Terry ended up with a hole under him that he had to take one of his booties and put under the tent to fill the gap. And it's it's important to do that just because once you create that hole or if you're moving around the tent and you punch down because it's not packed well, now you have to deal with that all night. So it's just something to be mindful about. As you can see, pretty challenging out there. A lot of considerations. That brings me to point number six that I talked about in the field, but I want to reiterate it. Hang on for point number seven. But point number six, boy oh boy. Stomp at a much bigger area than you think you need. The best way to do this is to get your skis, if you brought skis, and measure out how many ski links you're going to need in the area for your tent completely guide out with guy lines completely set out. It's much bigger than you actually think it is. And you think, eh, what's the big deal? Because what happens if you don't stomp out that area, you put your guy line too far, and then you step in you know, 10 foot deep of snow or three and a half meters, you don't want to do that. And point number seven, dun, 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 the biggest consideration is, do you use snowshoes or do you use skis to stomp out your campsite? And I will tell you unequivocally, snowshoes are better than skis for stomping out a tent pad because skis have better float. But that means that they actually, you know, the, the snowshoes have less float. That means the skis do not compact the snow as well as snowshoes. Speak from experience. I mean, I love my skis, totally great, but I always have a backup pair of snowshoes. One, if my skis completely fail, I break something, I can still travel in two. Man, it's totally worth the extra weight on a sled expedition to use snowshoes to stomp out that snow and makes it so much easier because going backwards and sideways on skis is just awkward and it makes it really, really tough. Please again, check out my book, Adventure Expedition 1. Links in the description and in the comments below. This is also available as an ebook as one subscriber mentioned, hey, please leave a comment about that. So there you go, super, super handy. In here you will find all the fun pointers about planning, preparing, training, and everything else you need. By the way, I have other books. I talk about my winter expeditions like Antarctic Tears, Lost at Windy Corner, Adventure Expedition 1, as well as the Jackson Hole Hiking Guide, How to Keep Your Feet Warm in the Cold, The Most Crucial Knots to Know, my 2024 Total Eclipse Guides, as well as my show Antarctic Tears and World Beyond. My name is Aaron Lentz, I'm a polar explorer and professional adventure. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so I can keep bringing more of this to you.